Well, today we're going to be talking about CO. Now, before we get started, make sure that you hit that like button and subscribe to the YouTube channel so you get all of the videos. We're going to talk to Gerald Blaine as well as Steven Taylor today um, about CO. And we're looking forward to hanging out on The Boiling Point. Well, what's up guys? How are you all? Well, welcome to The Boiling Point. Thought we'd do something a little bit different today. Uh, we are actually in the low fire lounge uh, in, in our office here and uh, just kind of a place that we just hang out a little bit and thought we'd have a little discussion because it's safety today. I've got pretty uh, cool that we have Gerald and Steven together. You actually see these guys a lot of times just by themselves, but safety is important and wanted to talk a little bit about some CO and safety. Um, so first of all, Steven, CO, what is it? That's uh, carbon monoxide. So it's a natural off gas from combustion um, and we try to get it out of the building where it's supposed to go out the stack and it's just something that we control as much as we can with uh, you know with with controls and monitoring systems and EGAs with auto flame uh, but it's a byproduct that we we can only do so much with and there's going to be some left over regardless of what we do. In the burner there's obviously CO that you guys are always trying to um, adjust and, and to watch right? Yeah uh, CO like Stephen says it's an off gas when it's not used. Right. So it's, if you don't fully combust it and CO gets out into the atmosphere, it's highly poisonous. How would you not combust it? Um, poor combustion, it could be your, the type of equipment you're using. Okay. And some equipment does a better job than others. Uh, like, there's like federal regulations to have a maximum amount of say 100 ppm. Mm -hmm. uh, some equipment we use, we typically are at zero, which mm -hmm. is ideal. Mm -hmm. um, but m most equipment do produce some CO. Mm -hmm. And so you want to make sure, you know, it doesn't get out into the room where you're inhaling it, things like that. Is there any danger with CO as far as in the combustion of, of too high, too low? It's, it's very dangerous. It's, it, it um, you know, if you get it way too high, then you're going to push the, go stuff, snuff the fire out. Mm -hmm. um, if you get it too low to where you have nothing, then you get your O2 too high, then you're inefficient. So you got to... You know, there's a balance there. You want mm -hmm. it zero CO, that's what you strive for. Mm -hmm. um, and we can do that with most of the burner technology, but you, you just, you have to watch it all the time. Right. Yeah, I know that it's very dangerous because, you know, you've even seen some in the news about some people that have been passing um, with the, um, you know, CO um, being too high into a, a, a room or, you know, hotel room or whatever it is. And where, where do you actually get CO that could actually um, kill somebody or put some, make somebody pass out or whatever it is, where does it come from? Well, if you have leaks of any type in your stack, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and I think a lot of those uh, instances that you're describing may happen in, in, in more of a commercial environment mm -hmm. where they're not used to having people there all the time like we are in industrial environments mm -hmm. or industrial environments that are much larger and can dilute a lot easier. Mm -hmm. uh, if you have more confined space and you have any type of a leak, um, it's going to be a real dangerous situation in a hurry. Mm -hmm. well, and, and probably the, the thing that people can relate to the most is you, you watch a movie and see somebody go sets a, a car up in a garage and decides to kill themselves. They start the car up, close the garage door, sit there and they go to sleep. And it's CO, it's carbon monoxide, and they choke to death and they die right there in the car. Yeah, we're not doing that, <laughs> so don't be doing that. Um, so, so obviously CO is kind of on the forefront right now. And I know we were at the American Boiler Manufacturers Association. Some folks were talking about it. Stephen, you recently have uh, started using a CO monitor um, in the rental units. Yeah. Um, Texas has adopted a, a law, a rule that says any boiler room has to have a CO monitor and the CO monitor has to be tied into the control system so that if the CO gets to a certain level, it sounds an alarm. If it goes to a next level, it shuts the boiler off. So okay. all of our rental boilers have to be uh, set up that way. So we put CO monitors in there and, and uh, make sure that, that they're tied into through the control system where we shut the units down if it gets up. They're looking at about 400 deaths a year um, is what they say, and about 20,000 people actually go to the emergency room. Um, with some type of, uh, you know, uh, CO problem. 
um, drilled as far as like in boiler rooms that you're in, um, you know, obviously Texas has adopted this, but it's not in every state, but is it a good thing to do? Yeah, it is, and there are some environments that do this all the time. You'll see this not uncommon in hospitals, uh, VA hospitals in particular follow these type of protocols. Mm -hmm. um, we talk about the death thing, <clears throat> but the thing about CO, if you are inhaling CO, you are doing damage to your brain, mm. and it is permanent. Mm. So it is a, a very big deal to try to avoid uh, being around CO and breathing it in. Yeah. Um, so more and more, and, and that's why we're talking about this today, more and more we're more conscientious of, you know, what's going on in the boiler room outside of the boiler. Mm -hmm. uh, and once, if the system's functioning properly, everything's going out the stack, we're not having CO issues, but it's odorless, mm -hmm. so you don't necessarily know that it's going on, which is why you have these type of systems. Yeah. How do these actually, when we, in a boiler room, kind of what are we doing with those? Where are they, where are they putting them? Well, this particular one, and there are a variety of types. This can you want it to be with about six feet of where the combustion is occurring, mm -hmm. and you don't want it within uh, less than is you don't want it as close as four feet to a ventilated area, mm -hmm. so that you don't have it fighting against each other. Mm -hmm. and you want to keep it about five feet off the ground, yeah. um, and then like I said, it'll alarm. But it also is directly tied into the uh, the burner management system interlock. Mm -hmm. So not only will it give you an alarm, it literally shuts down uh, the boiler. Yeah. So now you still could have a leak somewhere else in the boiler room, of course, but this right. at least um, is something that you can put in the boiler room, and that's really what we're talking about. I know there's other CO monitors probably that you can right. put all over the place, but um, the, the main thing is is that get a CO monitor, put it in your boiler room, um, and start making sure that we're not having any type of uh, catastrophes, if yeah, you will, and deaths. This is, I mean, it's not a hundred thousand dollar expenditure. They're they're fairly inexpensive, and yeah. it's a very very inexpensive insurance protocol to, to right. keep people from running into trouble. Yeah. All right, guys, appreciate it. Thanks for your time. All that you guys do, you can actually get this product on BoilerWarehouse.com, obviously, and um, we'll see you next time on the Boiling Point.